Okay, so we're going back to inequalities on this video. So we started the week graphing um, a linear inequality, and then we stepped into solving systems of equations and how to do that. And now we're going to look at systems of equa inequalities, sorry, not equations. Um, so remember, inequality means that we're going to be doing some shading because there's an area of solutions instead of a single line of solutions. Um, so with these ones, we're going to graph the, the two um, inequalities, and then we're going to shade both of them, and where the two shading overlap, that is where we want to see, or that's, that's the solution area that we want to um, use. So we're going to use slope-intercept form because they're actually already in that form for us. I know it's not an equal sign, but we can still use that the same idea behind the slope-intercept form to graph the lines. Um, and then we can worry about solid or dotted lines in just a moment. Um, so we have slope is m and y-intercept is b. Um, so we can very quickly identify you know, what our slope is and what our y-intercept is. And then dotted or solid lines. So just remember a dotted line is when we're using less than or greater than, and we, we're going to use a solid line when we have less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. So it's visually just letting us know, is it included or is it just a starting point? And we can actually use a solution on that point. So it's a very quick visual reminder of what solutions can be chosen. Uh, all right, and then we're going to graph our lines. So let's see, do I start circling here? I think I start circling. Okay. So we have m is equal to 4, so our slope on this one is equal to 4, and our y-intercept is equal to negative 3. So again, using that slope-intercept form, I was very quickly able to grab those. And then I also note that it's a dotted line because it's just greater than. So it's going to be a dotted line or a dashed line. The second one, I have my slope is negative 2, my y-intercept is negative 5, and it's a solid line because it's got an equal to sign under it, so it's less than or equal to. Um, down here, I am telling you to choose colors, and if you use highlighters, this actually turns out really nice on paper because um, the two colors are going to combine so that you can see very easily where they are. So if you use colors that are kind of that combine nicely, like if you use um, red or a pink and blue, then the combined area will, will be purple. If you use yellow and either a pink or a red, then the combined area will be orange. So it just makes it very easy for you to see where that actual solution area is if you use those kind of nice colors like that. Um, if you just have a pencil, it's perfectly fine. Just shade kind of in opposite directions. If you've ever taken like an art class and you've heard of like hatching and cross hatching, that's exactly a perfect way to note that the two areas, because if you shade one one direction and then you shade the other the other direction, and I know that's kind of a funny way to do that with my mouse, but they'll be crisscrossed where they the um, true solution area is. All right, so I'm going to do my first line here. So I have negative 3, so I'm starting at my y-intercept, and then I'm going to go up 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and over 1, because that's my slope, 4 over 1. Remember, if I don't see a number underneath, that means it's a 1. And it's a um, dotted line, so I'm or dashed or dotted, however you want to say that. And my second point here, let's see, there it is. I didn't see it, and my mouse was on top of it. So it's at negative 5, and I'm going to go down 2, right 1, because it's negative 2. So down 2, right 1, and this is a solid line, so there we go. We can see, now we're not looking for just where they cross anymore. That was when we have a system of equations, but now a system of inequalities, I want to know where the two shaded areas cross. So now we're going to do some shading. So um, I'm going to use a test point on this one. There's two options here. You can use a test point um, or you can look at the y-intercept. So choosing a test point for um, the equations to determine the areas of shade, um, you can choose something like 0, 0. So if the, the point is true, if you do get a true answer, then you shade on that side of the line. Otherwise, if it's false, you shade on the other side of the line. 0, 0 is a really, really easy one to test because it kind of eliminates things very quickly. Um, but if I kind of take a step back to that y-intercept idea, if I go to the y-intercept for the, the red line, the first one, and it's greater than, that's the inequality they're using, what that tells me is I can go to this point and I'm going to shade above that line, so on this side of the line. Um, so 
it's just kind of going straight up and that's when I would shade. And then I can do the same thing for the second um, equation which I put here in blue. Here's my y-intercept. It's less than, so I would go below that line. So it's just another way of looking at that. So if I do my test point here, I have zero is greater than four times zero plus negative three. And again, I'm just taking this equation and I'm putting zero and zero in. And so now I'm looking at it. So I have zero is greater than negative three because zero plus three, negative three is negative three. So that is true. Zero is greater than negative three. Um, so I shade on that side of the line, which is exactly what happened when I went to that y-intercept and went above. Okay, so if I go to my second one, I'm going to use 0, 0 again for my test because now I'm testing the blue line. So I want to know if 0, 0 is in the solution area for the blue line. So if I'm using that y-intercept idea, I already know it's not going to be because I would go below this line. I wouldn't go up here, I would go down. But we can go ahead and use the equation. So 0 is less than or equal to negative 2x minus 5. So 0 is less than or equal to negative 5. Well, that is false. 0 is not less than negative 5. It's greater than negative 5. So I would shade on the other side of the line, not the side where 0, 0 is on the other side here, which is exactly what we looked at when I went less than. So now we can see that this darker area, it's kind of like a pinkish purple, but I can see that there's a purple area here. So I'm not looking at this little blue triangle. Um, I should make this red a little longer so it takes up the whole area here because it would just continue going down forever and ever. And I'm not looking at just the red area either. So it's the area where they mix completely. Um, and again, I cut it off here a little too early. This should keep going up off the, the line. This pink area shouldn't actually be pink. It should be purple because this should continue going up. Um, so let's see, we are going to try one more of these. So now we're going to do a system of three equations um, to see where our systems kind of clash together. Um, so with this one, you can already see what I'm doing here because it's not fully animated. I'll have to go back and fix that. So 7x plus 3y is greater than 18. I have x is greater than or equal to 0. y is greater than or equal to 0. So we have three um, equations. Really, we have one kind of inequality and two constraint inequalities. They're just constraining the graph to a specific area. So what we're going to do is we're going to solve this for y, so that way we can graph it. So we have um, 7x being added on the same side as y, so we're going to subtract it. So I have 3y is greater than negative 7x plus 18. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 3 so that y is all by itself. And I have negative 7 divided by 3, x, so I have my slope, and plus 6 because 18 divided by 3 is 6. So now I can graph this line. So my slope is negative 3, 7 thirds, and my y-intercept is 6. I'm also noting that it's a dotted line because it's greater than, it's not greater than or equal to. So I'm going to start by going to my y-intercept, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So there's my y-intercept. And then my slope, I'm going to go down 7 and right 3. So there's my second point, and I'm going to draw my dotted line right across this, and I, I'm noting that it's red, so I gave it the color red on this one. Um, all right, so now let's put our constraint pieces in. So now if x is greater than or equal to 0, so this is x at 0, is right here. And since it's greater than or equal to, it's a solid line. And then we also have y is greater than or equal to 0. So I'm putting that one in pink. So that's our y axis or our x axis because that's where y is 0. It's greater than or equal to. So again, it's another solid line. So now let's look at our shading. Um, so if we're going to shade on the, the red dotted line or dashed line, I'm going to go to my y intercept. And since it's greater than that point, we're going to shade above. But we're going to look at a test point. Um, and I went just back to the standard form here. So 7 times 0 plus 3 times 0 is less than, or sorry, greater than 18. So 0 plus 0 is 0, and 0 is not greater than 18. That's false. So I'm going to shade on this side of the line. And I did, woof, the whole screen <laughs> just turned red there. Um, so now for the other two pieces, 
I just want to make sure that I throw the shading in there so that we can see where they um, all cross over. So for blue, if it's if x has to be greater than zero, that means it can't go on the left side. It has to go on the right side. So there we go. We can see. So now we can start to see that purple area. So the only we have a red area up here that doesn't count. We have a blue area here that doesn't count. Only the purple area would count. And now we have y is greater than or equal to zero. So we would go above the y. Um, y is zero. So it can't go below. It can't be negative here. Um, so it's going to go above. So this kind of turned a little bit light purple because of the two kind of pink and red colors mixing together. And this turned a little darker red. But we're still looking at this darker purple area. And you can even see there's kind of a line here that separates. So it wouldn't be this light purple area. It would be this darker purple area that's kind of up here. So um, on the graph, it would just be this section. But remember, this graph does actually continue. They're just cutting it off a little bit early here. So, all right. Well, that was graphically solving um, linear inequalities. And I hope that helped. I will see you in the next video.